doing, man? Back off, he's only glams. Yes. Yeah, welcome everyone. It's Tuesday. Welcome to Drive Time. Welcome to Expat Radio. If you're driving, be safe, yeah? Because we, we have um, a special guest today, Gary Palmer from Cromer Classic Cars um, Garage, um, restoration place, hire place. And um reason why we're getting Gary uh, on a show, because we've been having um, always serious discussions about insurances, cat insurance write-offs um, some maintenance things and some how you buy in a car uh, how you might um, sell the car and we just bring in something on something probably which a lot of people love and like and um, and Gary will be the person and um, who has quite impressive cars in a, in a stock and um, and he's obviously passion is classic cars and the probably will be a little story from Gary how he actually started it and he's and and I will introduce Gary in a second but I, I want to quickly jump in a story as well about how how he quite met uh, with Gary and I, I think it was quite funny I mean not really funny but I mean there is a story behind it so I went out to the lady Sarah and um, I, if you've seen one of my videos where I wrote us in the little little beetle little um, little a cooled engine this uh, which has been designed by uh, Ferdinand Porsche and, uh, and um, I, I was quite excited to see and it was a convertible as well you know uh, probably w it would have taken me about an hour to put um, a roof on right so um, and and Gary obviously was selling this sort of vehicle um, in his nice garage uh, and um, and I was thinking he, 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 he's he's basically by the um, by the nature he's a builder and but then then he told me his story how he went from building into into classic cars and then he built this sort of nice amazing place which I was thinking is crazy you know it's not my cup of cake and probably not everyone's cup of cake are classic cars but I mean once you see the classic car hold on cup of, cup of cake <laughs> cup of cake yeah I mean yeah cup of I mean, couple. Of, this is my, uh, this is my way of oh saying it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you have to be different. You can't be just saying oh, anything the same way. The cakes. That's what I'm saying. I've been eating cakes. Cake? Cake yeah. It's not my cup of cake. Uh, tea. <laughs> So yeah, let's have a let, let's have a cup of coffee, right? <laughs> so yeah, I forgot what I actually was saying. <laughs> You've thrown me off the cliff. <laughs> Here in London, you don't even have a cliff. Yeah, the Gary. Yeah, throw us a cake about um, how you actually started from. Um, having a profession which is completely different and going into the classic arts and having a um, a nice restoration business which turns into restoration business and hiring business and the love of classic cars and what you actually have okay. welcome all uh, it's gary here from uh, great with classic cars um i just uh cows came and saw me uh, last week to see examined a beetle that was actually selling for the client and uh, he road tested it and loved it so much that um, I wondered when it was going to come back actually. Anyway, uh, I'm actually a builder by trade. And yeah, he's probably an Estonian on eBay now that, I tell you. This is one now, you know what it is. <laughs> nah, the customer loved it, she bought it, you know. And that's it, yeah, and I'm delivering it at the weekend, she loves it. So, oh, three days. That's it. But I'm actually a builder by 
my trade and uh, I had about nine bands on the road at one time and I got really fed up of paying the local garage 50 or 60 pound an hour actually to go and repair my bands and machinery because it's off the road. So um, uh, with my accountant, I asked if I could call my own mechanic and uh, yeah, she says, of course you can. So it was cheap to be employ an own mechanic to actually send my uh, vehicles out to other garages to be fixed. And then once all the all the vehicles that was on the road and that they had, he was just sweeping the floor of the garage. And I said, well, I've got to get something to do, to do here. So we bought a plastic cart just off a whim, with a little time spit fire. And he stripped it down and uh, we put it all back together and sprayed it and we made some money on it. So I said, well, this is an easier life than actually laying bricks and up a roof and up a scaffold and things like that. So we actually just started to stem from that. Um, I had, uh, I had two hotels to restore, which I completed and whatever. In the meantime, I started buying classic cars and now I've got about 25 sitting up there. You know, some are restored, some are not. And then um, we just started making a little business out of it. And it's just actually grown now. Now we've got a large unit, two full-time mechanics. And uh, we now take other people's cars in to actually be restored, and uh, which is a nice little uh, Nice little sideline at the moment, so I'm slowly, uh, slowly moving away from the building side, and then starting to increase the classic cup side. So yeah, I, I've been noticing. Yeah, you, you, you kind of tro um, when I was there, you were still cracking on on your nice house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. We're trying to get that finished because the wife wants a sea view now. We live near the coast here and whatever, so it's time to actually uh, downscale a bit and find a, a coastal house so we can just renovate and. Um, have a nice sea view and retire then just in, just enjoy my cars. Yep. I've got a sea view, yes. Fantastic. I've got a sea view I'm on the 10th floor of a block of flats about four hours <laughs> <laughs> from the coast. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit hard on the coast now and uh, Angela walks a dog on the beach every day and whatever and we love it up here. Uh, the North Norfolk coast is beautiful. It's still unspoiled. Uh, it's the only county in England without a motorway at the moment so let's keep it that way. Out yeah. That's, that's the one thing. That's one thing about France is that the motorways over here are tremendous. They're only two. Well, two, apart from Paris, where you get them obviously a bit wider, but the two two lanes where I am, and uh, there's no bugger on them. Seriously, it's <laughs> that way, don't we? That's it. Yeah. Well, I don't know how everybody gets around France. I'm thinking, how do you move? I know it's all bikes and onions around your neck and all that carry on, but I mean, <laughs> there's no bugger to having a car. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's it. Uh, well, we get a lot of Londoners coming up, see, so, uh, you know, it's still commuting distance to London and things like that, and uh, so uh, we've got a few second homes uh, up here um, from these Londoners and things like that, which is pushing the high, which is pushing the locals, you know, the prices are, uh, are going up, and uh, of course the locals, some of them can't actually afford houses around here now, so um, it's a bit of a shame, but... Way That's a yeah. dilemma, I think, everywhere. It doesn't matter where, in which country you live, um, it's always a case. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, we're talking about cars. Yeah, still... we're talking about the cars. And um, oh, what I want to ask you is, I like the way, if you, if, if listeners, have you noticed, um, Gary actually gave a little sort of practical advice. So that was like, he found out he was spending too much on a car repairs and then he moved into this business because he he, he find that will sort of help him and and he developed something which is quite cool and Gary um, you mentioned also um, you are a dealer of of of, of what you call these um, nice cars Armstrongs Armstrong Simples yeah you yes. are authorized dealer of well, no, 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 we just work on Armstrong Siddleys, you know, there's not many people that do out there, we have a few uh, from London over the con around the country that come down, is that I was quite passionate about Armstrong Siddleys, it was one of the first um, cars that I purchased with Armstrong Siddley, and the engineering of an, of an Armstrong Siddley, who were, of course, aircraft designers during the war, as at the end of the war started to produce these lovely cars and things like that. So I, I, it was one, I bought a Hurricane, which is a, a four-seater convertible. It was one of my first classic cars, and we enjoyed it so much. I just started trying to collect the range. And, uh, you you mean Typhoon Convertible, yeah? Uh, Darmstrong, Sidley yeah, Typhoon right. Convertible. Yeah, Typhoon Convertible, a Typhoon. So you got the Typhoon, Typhoon Convertible, uh, Typhoon, a Whitley, um, uh, 
uh, what's called a 346 uh, Sapphire 346 and then you've got the Sapphire Star uh, Listeners, if you don't know what we're talking about, you can actually go in a um, chromaclassicars.com and have a look on the on the on the cars a selection. Then you will see how the actually the hurricane looks, the typhoon convertible looks, and uh, sapphire. You know, three, four, six. Then then you will understand what we're talking about. So it's cl uh, chromaclassicars.com. So yeah, continue, Gary. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, all the cars are really named after aircrafts that um, they produced during the war and um, except the Sapphire which is a, which is a jet engine uh, they developed and uh, so oh. the Sapphire was actually the jet engine they produced Armstrong Sydney. Armstrong Sydney have been around since 1909 I think it was in, in different names uh, Armstrong Deasley and things like that before the war and then they changed it over and the with that, there's quite a few people they had uh, Mr. H.R. Owen well, Bentley, he designed the Sapphire Star for them. All right. Like uh, yeah, so they're quite a, they're a bit of an underdog. Yeah, um, that's what I wanted to just actually mention. Um, you know, it's quite, I mean, famous cars, but I mean, it is an underdog, as you mentioned it. Yes, it is. It is. It's, um, it's a selective market, you could say, really. You know, you you got your Alvises, your Rolls Royces, and your Bentleys, and things like that. But then, uh, you know, you've got these just lying just underneath, uh, which is um, it's a fantastic club. Um, every part, you can virtually get every part for every car. Uh, There's a big um, warehouse farm down in Bristol. Uh, they're open three days a week. Uh, Nick in the store is, if he, what he doesn't know about Armstrong City, it's not worth really knowing. And uh, he can ring up, you think, what this part here? And he can tell you what part you require, and he'll have it out for you, shipped out for you, which is the same day or from the day. So it's are they really renovated cool. parts? Are they are they new? Are they just or making them from scratch? Um, oh no, no, there is actually some new parts. Because Rolls Royce actually bought Armstrong Sydney out in 1916, okay. and they closed the factory down, and the, the club purchased all virtually like machinery and all of the. Um, parts are still in the store, so there's still parts in there, still wrapped up in the old grease food paper and things like that. That's quite so, amazing. It is, it's an amazing place to go down to, and uh, I think they do allow profit down there by appointment. I will walk is around it? and interest in buying one, then that's the person to go to have a chat and things like that. Whereabouts the address is, if you can tell uh, tell again somebody somebody who's in um, listening in England or visiting, they might want to go there and, and who love classic cars, maybe yeah, it would be a good weekend. What? If you go onto the white website, it's just the stores. There's no cars there, and I appreciate it. it's just the stores there. Uh, they open Monday, Tuesday, and Fridays. Um, if you log on to their website, Armstrong Stidley, um, I think the address is on there. It's Cricklewell or something like that, just outside Bristol. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know the address. I'll probably address on top of my head. Um, okay. But, um, but if you go onto their website or Facebook page or something like that, the full address is there. And then, um, if you're interested in buying Armstrong Stidley, yeah, um, and you want to go down and see what the way you're restoring the car, the cheap, the, the best way of restoring the car is find out what parts are available. Um, it makes it makes the restoration a lot cheaper uh, if you're restoring the car. If you can go find out, do some back research on the car you can use. Find out what the spares are like. Are they readily available and things like that? And you will find that it's a cheaper restoration than than some of these cars where the parts are obsolete and things like that. And it makes it a little bit difficult to actually to restore it and it gets a bit more costly as well. I like that. We're gonna go to music time now. They're gonna play they're gonna play probably something nice, hopefully, and then we're gonna come back and you can actually give us um, some tips about how you can save money, what you should look like when you're buying a classic car and how you should not be overspending the money. I think that will be a, a great ending of the show. Um, yeah, no problem. All right, Dave, we'll leave it to yeah, you. Right, we're going to play Kelly Clarkson and catch my breath. This is the all day special on Expat Radio and you're listening to Drive Time with Klaus this morning. Nice. All right, so Dave left now, so we are now me and you, Gary, live on a Facebook. I'm doing it. I, I'm from doing live from my car. <laughs> How are you doing, Klaus? You're right. Yeah, I'm um, uh, 
I'm good. I'm just going to Dunstable. I got um, I got an inspection on our Audi Q3. Right. And then I got 15 plate Range Rover uh, Vogue to do. Um, Look at the chassis on those. What plate is that? Um, 2015, 2016. Oh, right. So that, that should be um, reasonably uh, alright, hopefully. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. Uh, but, uh, you know, every time, you know, I'm glad people are out there like yourself, you know, that are actually going out and doing things like this. You know, you're not just here and there and you're Yeah, yeah, we had we had them, but that that that's just um. So the little minor thing, that's probably would be more. Probably that's what you see more on a classic cars, right? Um, oh yeah, definitely. Oh definitely, yeah. Oh, more, more so than a modern car. Yeah, and uh, you know, this is this is the thing. Um, you know, the modern cars are I mean, that's the general how the people buy um, cars with their heart, uh, with their heart, not with their head. It's like, it's like a gamble. Ah, I need it. I want it. And I now want it now. <laughs> yeah, I want it now. I want to drive it away. Yeah. You know, like, it could be totally on road safe and things like that. And, uh, and, 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 and people still do it, unfortunately. You know, so that's why I'm glad people come out. You know, you can respect that meeting and she's happy with it. She, she doesn't know anything about cars and things like that. She just look like the look of it and uh, that's it. So, you know, and uh, she's quite happy with the report you sent over to her, so she just sent the money straight down the full asking price. Mm -hmm. Cool. Did you did she send you the um, our report as well across? No, she she, she, she gave me the main points and why right. she wanted she wanted to see if we can replace that seat for her and she wanted to change the speedometer for her. Uh, just to get the mileage going or whatever. We just take the old one out and see if it needs cleaning up. If not, we just replace that. Um, uh, she's willing to pay for it. She's, you know, it's about 40 quid for a new dial, you know, mm. and, and put in there. So that's it. Um, the seats, we could only find, because they're quite rare, those black weave um, seats, because they're molded. Uh, the original seats then it was, it was quite difficult to find those now, so, the, oh oh you mean the, the way it was sort of slashed you mean um, yeah the driver's seat yeah where it's worn through and whatever yeah we've just been trying to uh, find one of those for her so we've replaced that but we're having a bit of a difficulty so if anybody's out there who's got a nice We need to mention that on our ending to, towards the ending of the show. Um, yeah. So it might be somebody. Um, yeah, God, yeah. You... No, no, this morning. Hi, hi, hi. My voice is good today. That's all we need. I'm going to need subtitles on the radio. That'll be a laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Have a bit of water. Yes, welcome back on a dry time, yeah? Yes, welcome back. If you don't know where you're tuned in, it's expatradio.uk. Dry time is Claps. And special guest Gary and Dave on the side drinking coffee. <laughs> so, we're going to continue with, with the classic cars. And um, there are probably people, the listeners, who probably like them. Uh, some of them might not, but they still have to stick with it. <laughs> um, Gary, you know, if I would be buying a car, or or maybe Dave, after the show, it will be, okay, I'm going to go and buy one. 
and uh, what what we should be looking at when we buy a particularly uh, classic car and how we would know um, we, when we would not be overspending on restoration and um, what is your sort of, what is your clever tips um, being in this bowl game for a long time? Okay, what you do first do your research. Do your research on a car. You know, you've got the internet there. Yeah, you we do. Look at different cars, the price of the cars, what the car should look like, feel like, what problems there are with the cars, and things like that. You're talking about just in a general, right? The the car we just want, we like. Good. See a car that you, you particularly like, an Alvis TA or you know, or an Armstrong or something like that. Jump on that internet, yeah. And before you go and see it, do your homework, speak to people, and things like that. And this it all depends if you are a mechanically minded, you know what to look for. But if you're just a general person that actually wants to, I want to buy a classic car. Uh, you know, just to drive around on the Sunday afternoons and things like that, and you don't know what you're looking for, then up one, do your research, uh, go and have a look at the car first in person after you've done that, and then pay something like yourself, Klaus, or somebody who knows what they're doing to go and have a look at it for you. So what actually Gary mentioned, so that means you go to carexamer.com, book an inspection and if you don't know what you're looking or needs to be doing and needs more specific advice classic cars chroma classic cars dot com ask for Gary and you get a spot on advice yeah yeah do that we, we, we're always open you know just give us a ring or something like that mobiles there and, uh, and the landline uh, please just keep it to normal office hours you would be appreciated and things like that but no, if you're going to, we also do a little service where people buy these cars on the internet. Um, you know, I don't think I mentioned eBay and things like that, different auction sites and whatever. And then we actually go and if it does need restoring, we can go and click that car and we check it over before we purchase it before we actually hand the money over uh, to the to the seller. Uh, so what is the buyer sends us the money? We then go and collect the car, but we'll actually inspect it first for them. Just in general, not as in detail as yourself, Klaus, but we'll get underneath and make sure it's not a rock box and things like that. And what and how that car has been described on the auction side is what that buyer is actually purchasing. Yeah? All right. And all that. And so we'll have that. And then if it's not, then we'll actually open, we'll open, we'll go into negotiation to try to try and actually... Um, Reduce the price, you know, the cost of repairing it. If it's a bad paint job, and they say it's a mint paint job, if it's a two thousand pound paint job that needs, we'll try and discuss and we'll try and get the money for the buyer, you know, off the asking price because that's why he's he's purchasing that um, with all good faith on the internet side. Yeah. And if it's not as described, then a normal collection people would just, you know, you pay somebody to go and collect it and you get it back and say, well, this is all, this isn't what I'm described. And really, you try and get the money back then from somebody. It's quite difficult, you know, you've got to prove it, something like that. But if, if you're there before you've collected it, you know, and you can give it the once over, you know, we're not examiners, please don't get me wrong, we're not examiners, we're not like yourself, Klaus, we don't do that. But we can see the general, you know, what problems, if there is any, with the car uh, before we actually load on the back of the trailer or the track and then bring it back. Mm, so That's a nice yeah. service, yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it doesn't cost no extra. We, we still pay for the collection of it, but we will actually not just collect it. We'll give it the once over first and make sure it's as described, you know, in the advert before the uh, buyer hands over the money. So the buyer sends us the money. We will then go up there with the reddies and pay it. But if it's as described, there's no problem. We'll have the money over and then we'll load it up and bring it back. Awesome. So that's the one way how you can manage the situation. But let's say if somebody is quite stubborn and he's going, I'm going to do it myself. Uh, I don't care about um, Chroma Classic Cars. I don't care about CarExamer.com. Um, what should be? What should they be looking at? Like, is one one instance? It would be the price of of that um, car. What yeah. needs to be renovating, right? And and then the amount of how much money they will have to put in, how they go around um, around this so they can make some, uh, 
they, the, the, the buyer or the listeners, they can make sense of themselves of how much in total they should be actually spending on, on, on this sort of classic art, classic art would, they be, would they be looking at and planning to buy and get renovated and what should, what, what's important for them to not exceed? Okay, if you buy the classic car to renovate, there's two reasons why you do it. One is for investment purposes, second one is a sentimental value. So my father had one of these and I want one, you know, and things like that. So then you don't really mind the sort of cost that's going to be involved. But if it's an investment value, you've got to do your homework and find out how much the renovation costs are going to be before yeah, you actually purchase that car. Because if it exceeds the value, and the value of that classic car isn't going up as much as it would like to... So we talk, you're talking about now the market value, right? The market value of a classic car. Yeah. The market is, is going to the right. Classic cars took off a while ago, about I can't remember, about four or five years ago, when a couple of things happened, is when people could take money out of their pensions, then the banks weren't doing anything. So, oh, let's buy a classic car and, and we can have that in an investment, and that will increase better than what the rates you'll get from the bank. And uh, it's also then the, uh, just lost my train of thought, and then the other one is that also you, you don't get capital gains on it. You still pay inheritance tax on some cars, but capital gains is free. A classic car is of any capital gains is, is, is free. You know, it's tax free money. Okay. And and I believe that you can don't quote me on this, please, everybody. Now we will do some research. You might you might just talk about that separately. I mean that's why I mean it's a like investment topic, that would be separate, but carry on. Yeah, it's it. But um, you, you, if you buy a classic car, you must also then, it's not just a case of putting it to a garage, uh, you know, your own garage and leaving it there. You need to maintain it still. You know, if you buy a, a perfect classic car that needs nothing doing, you'd be wrong. Every classic car needs something doing it and it needs content maintenance. If not, a car just sitting there on a concrete floor will just devalue. Well, we've run out of time this morning. We've got to go to the news, but uh, we'd love you to come back on one day, Gary, if you can, if you got the time to come back on again. Yeah, of course I have. I'm self-employed, Dave, so that's it. Why, uh, I like five, that. Five, five, five. <laughs> Perfect, mate. Perfect. So I think, yeah, probably we'll continue on, on Thursday then, probably, um, if Gary will yeah. be around. But uh, well, let's go back to you. Yeah. Klaus, yeah. Klaus, can we do it next? Have you got a slot next week? Yes, we do, yeah. Can I do it next week, Klaus, please? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah. So, um, is that good? I'm just really busy. I'm, on, I'm really busy this week, actually. Um, so, no problem. Well, we've got to go to news, so we'll get in touch and we'll, be, we'll get you back on the show next week, Gary. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks, for thanks for tuning in. Show this morning and speak See you to Thursday. You next week. Yeah, cheers. Cheers, all. Have a great day. And join Clavs back on Thursday as well.